Hello everybody, this is James with Kelvin Tides and back with another video talking about 123D design and uh, I've had a few questions uh, recently about uh, 123 design, what do I do when basically the system starts bogging down and uh, there's a lot of noticeable effects, can't really do anything more and uh, while I can't cover every possible contingency for that I'll show you a few tips uh, on, on how I sort of take care and alleviate those problems when they happen and as you can see I'm using Bandicam here to do the uh, to do the video I just wanted to leave this up here um, you can see right here it says uh, how many megabytes of information the video is using as as it uh, goes through time here we're already up to uh, what, about two megabytes here and this 40 uh, 43 gigabytes is the remaining space on my hard drive <laughs> which is not a lot uh, and and so already my computer uh, my laptop here uh, is has has very slow performance even with other applications uh, just because of this right here the uh, the amount of uh, free uh, space on my hard drive uh, you know just bogs down my system and uh, so I have to, I've got to purge a lot of files uh, I've got to transfer some things, some things over I like to keep this particular laptop uh, right around uh, 80 to 100 gigabytes free and that and then usually I'm okay with using uh, any software programs let's go into 123 d design though and we'll start a new project and uh, you can see I'm, I'm moving the the workspace around fairly easily and uh, we have nothing on the board so to speak and uh, so let's pull out a let's put out a box and we'll just put that there and as as you start designing um, you know more and more information is being utilized by the program and it's going to be slowing it down and there again the the, the performance of 123d design uh, honestly it's not that great you know but you know it's one of those things it's a give or take you know it's a free program uh, so we, we can sometimes excuse these things uh, until obviously it's not working out for us and, and then I'll show you a few things that you can do uh, so I'm going to go copy paste this box and pull this out here and then now we've got two I'm going to copy paste those and then maybe just pull those out there and uh, what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to crash the system. So <laughs> copy paste. So if you could just hang out for a moment and we'll just double these up until we start seeing some s system performance issues here. And so right now, okay, as I'm selecting all of these, well, we got about 16 cubes. I noticed it took a minute <laughs> to select all of those and so it's really starting to sort of bog down and so that should be 32 and we'll zoom out we'll grab those 32 and now it's really taking its time you can see we're getting some artifact effects of the screen so copy paste and now you can see it's really slowing down but it's still doing the job and there we go and so that's 64 cubes and we'll try to get all of those and yeah you can see it's really taking its time at this point and these are just you know straight up cubes we've done really nothing to them They're just default cubes we don't have any uh, you know cut paths or uh, snapping anything that we've done anything like that and so the more intricate your design is sometimes the more uh, memory it's going to take yeah, you can see but you can see we're still getting our numbers here um, a lot of times what will happen is this this will you won't be able to enter numbers into this little box if you're trying to uh, you know resize something either with a extrude or press pull um, or the uh, the smart scale size and uh, at that point it, it honestly it just becomes unusable and so what 
I'll often do is uh, save my work if I can and exit the program and try to uh, reload it. And of course, when I'm working in 123D design, I usually have other applications running in the background, uh, especially when I'm designing for the K40. I'll often have uh, at least one instance of Inkscape, <laughs> sometimes two or three, uh, which is a fairly intensive program on the uh, graphics processor here. And uh, I'll, I'll also have an instance of K40 Whisperer. So let's copy paste this. I think this is going to be what 128 uh, so yeah and, and other applications maybe I've got a few web browsers uh, or a web browser with a few tabs open uh, so a lot of things just really bogging down the system overall uh, which is not helping you know Autodesk 123D design by any means and yeah, it looks like oh I can still zoom in it hasn't given me the arrow for the copy paste I just did here yet. I can still move around. Uh, let me try to unselect that and try it again here. Oh, <laughs> I think I might have gotten to the point where, yeah. So we're going to crash the system basically at this point. And obviously one thing you'll notice I didn't do right off the bat is I did not save the project. So if I had done any real work here, uh, I might have lost all of that work and wouldn't necessarily be able to reclaim it. Oh, now it's starting to, okay, it's starting to come back to me. And we'll do the copy paste and now you can see it's, slowly bringing in those pasted cubes uh, sort of one by one let's see if we get them all and this is really taking some time and this can slow down your production and your workflow and and just make uh, things really really hard uh, on you to to accomplish and so that, that's that is one of the caveats of one two three D design now we're able to all right, it was able to copy paste that I, I don't think it will do it again let's just give it a try and uh, like at this point if I wanted to import something maybe import another object or a sketch uh, or if I had some sketches uh, I, on, on, on the work surface at this point uh, that would also contribute to this slowing down quite a bit and so here we are trying to select uh, this is going to be 128 uh, <laughs> to go to 256 you can see the hourglass and the artifacting here on uh, where the toolbar might show up and everything's just pretty much at a standstill and it hasn't crashed the program yet I'm sorry for doing this uh, in real time here making you wait <laughs> but I am not going to uh, edit out any of the video here I'm not that great at video editing <laughs> So you can you can skip forward uh, with the control on the YouTube window if you want to just skip forward to when this actually resolves. Okay, it actually selected them, and we'll do a copy paste. You can see these coming in one by one. It's actually doing pretty good considering. Uh, how much information we've got in in the program here and uh, I'm, I'm actually kind of surprised at this point I thought I figured by now it would have uh, crashed the program but you can see it is really going slow So, 
Yeah, I think at this point it's it's probably it's moot. You know, we're not going to be able to accomplish anything. And of course, I'm just copying and pasting uh, random cubes here. And whereas you may be designing some very intricate pieces and parts and putting them together or aligning them and and that sort of thing, and uh, you know, you wouldn't want to lose all of that hard work, all of that time and effort. Uh, and so I will, let's see, so if I can pull these out, it will let me, <laughs> wow, I am very surprised here. So, this is pretty exceptional. I wasn't expecting to be able to copy out that many cubes and, uh, and have this still uh, working to the point where I can manipulate the work area. Oh, that's pretty good. And so let's go ahead and start a new, and we're not gonna save this. I'm just gonna start a new work surface here, new work surface. Now I can see the, just manipulating the work area has uh, freed up uh, some, some, some memory or and that's to that sort of thing. So we're we're, we're uh, maybe not necessarily working with uh, the same amount of memory every time. Uh, sometimes I will have to just restart Autodesk One Two Three D design, and uh, you know it it will just depend <laughs> on the temperament of the day, I suppose. And so let's just just make a few of these here. That doesn't matter. We'll just bring out some things, and then we'll put down. Uh, we'll maybe just sketch a circle, and maybe we'll do a uh, a polyline sketch over here, and uh, nothing really particular. Just we'll close off that. There we go. And so I've got a couple sketches here, and maybe I'm going to add some, some more pieces at this point, and I'm starting to notice things bogging down. Of course, now with just this on the work surface, um, I wouldn't expect to see that until we start getting up into a higher amount of um, primitives and or sketches. And so what I can do here is I could select this sketch if I'm not using it at the moment, and I can hide it. And with this uh, little icon here, this little looks like an eyeball and so we can hide the sketch and that will sort of free up some of our resources Let's see if I can get so it's off there off the screen and we'll hide that one and so I could do the same thing with any one of the objects uh, as well I can hide the objects and that will seem to allow us to manipulate uh, more work to be done and of course we want to uh, we can show solids and message, uh, meshes. Um, we can hide them all right over here using this uh, little tool over here on the side. And uh, we can, again, show the sketches. Uh, we can hide the work surface, the grid. And we can hide all the sketches and show, uh, show everything. And so sometimes that will help. Um, to a certain degree and and there again uh, it's always a good idea to save your work save your project first if uh, something that you're working on is going to be something you're going to keep and then save often um, as you as you build your project and uh, you will run into this uh, this this situation where you're, it's going to bog down uh, at some point in one of your designs that's just that's a given um, and so there again, it's like I said, it's kind of a trade-off. It's not the uh, the most efficient piece of software out there, uh, but it is a free one, and and the tools uh, for what you can do uh, with it are are pretty good, um, in my opinion. And there again, I use this a lot when I want to get a design out really quick, or I have an idea, and I just want to uh, maybe get something designed out that I'm going to cut on the K40 or maybe I'm going to 3D print it. And uh, <clears throat> if, 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 
I need a more intricate program like Autodesk uh, 360. Um, well, right now, obviously, I can't use that on this computer. Uh, but I haven't run into a situation yet where I can't uh, complete a project in 123D design. Uh, maybe just my, my projects obviously haven't been that intricate. Uh, of course, the, uh, the few example videos we've done so far, uh, very simple boxes. That's, that's not what I would consider an intricate pro uh, uh, project. Although the round box, uh, you know, did have quite a few um, primitives in it <laughs> um, at, at one point, but that really wasn't enough to bog the system down to any noticeable degree. Um, so yeah, if you hide your work, uh, sometimes that will work for releasing some resources so you can uh, do other things. And uh, you know, obviously, if you're if you're going to uh, not need a sketch anymore you can just delete it all together and uh, the same thing with importing you know sketches and meshes and, and that sort of thing if you import something to uh, to use and then maybe, maybe you want to extrude something out of a uh, 2d sketch and then you don't need the sketch anymore you can delete that uh, or just hide it for uh, a while and uh, continue on with your work and so that will, uh, sometimes that will alleviate the problem and sometimes uh, it won't. So that's uh, just a little helpful hint, hopefully, that you might be able to use uh, in your designs when designing with 123D Design. And until the next time, we'll catch you later. Bye.